Hey everybody, the new merch is here. Uh, hey. This is one of the shirts. It's the Sobe Lizard shirt. I'm sewing. Ben sewing. We have like five designs. The LA Apparel, the nice shirts. Yes, the good shit. The very we made high sure to get the shirts. shit we like to wear. Yes. Yeah. We ordered like twenty shirts just to make sure we got the perfect one, so it's mm-hmm. not some piece of shit. They're great. They fit great. We know, like you know, over eighty percent of you are fat as shit. <laughs> Yeah, so they fit a little oversized, I think. Yeah, they're right. kind of an oversized feel. But yeah, just just, you know, buy accordingly. Like, you know, medium will mm-hmm. be fine for me, but it would be like a little baggier medium. But yeah. I still wear baggy shirts. I like you know. a bag baggy like I want XL. I like a baggy baggy. You, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm crazy. I'm loco. Uh, <laughs> you're neck and fats. <laughs> Ben's neck and fats. Yeah, I'm I'm neck and fats. Go to lemonparty.live to see all the sick designs we have. It's gonna be up for like four to five weeks. Maybe, f- actually, I- I'm going to say around four because we want to get it to you guys by Christmas. It's going to be a limited run, so you need to get it. And then these designs are going away. Then we're going to get all the shirts. We're going to print them, and we're going to ship them to you guys as fast as possible. We're doing this all in-house. Mm-hmm. My fingers are going to touch each all and in- one of these shirts. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. shipping them ourselves. We're ordering ourselves. I did all the designs except for shout out at vandal who did the wish i could have been there brother shirt yes. yeah. which i love which is like yeah one of the the greatest things i've ever seen in my life and i i'm so I, happy to see that i promise to miss the birth of my first daughter mm-hmm. to make sure you guys get these hoodies on time i will be in my garage packing everything shipping it directly to you okay that's our commitment to you so go to lemon party dot yeah. mm-hmm. life get your order in before we close it for this limited run and yeah. yeah, that's it. And enjoy this episode. Hope you like them. Hope you like the app. I'd buy like millions of like celebrity like dinners with Adam Scott yeah. for a benefit thing, and then just like not show up. I mean, yeah, when just you, stiff him. Anytime I hear about a guy like his dad is worth like 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 five billion dollars, and you're like, why does he run any? Why does he do anything? Why is he yeah. trying to do anything? Yeah, you should create a life that's basically a flotation tank. Like the Joe Rogan floats in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, build I, me a mech suit that's designed like a bed. When people have that much money, I always think like I have fantasies of just like, I'll just, I'm going to like buy like a fucking, I'm going to buy like a million cars and just illegally park them all over <laughs> LA just to fuck with like parking. And for, I, I, I would just like still be like a terrorist. Yeah. But then you pull up, you go, look at this asshole double park. You'd be like, oh. Oh, it's beep, me. beep. <laughs> I, that's mine. <laughs> oh, yeah. My bad. It's one of my million. Yeah. And everyone has a vanity plate that says, fuck you. Yes. <laughs> it's like, fuck you one through like 5,000. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, that's that's King Costa. <laughs> the king of SoCal, they call him. I'm not kidding. I've been thinking about running for like a local like council thing. Really? Yeah. I just think it would be funny to wear a suit and be like, like show up drunk to like speeches. Dude, and... that, that would be great if you're at a council meeting just being a terrorist. Yeah. For like 15, like just white moms i want to be up there and have like like i don't speak any of the political lingo Mm -hmm. but i just i still rally people somehow i'm just like it's fuck guys it's gay isn't it (laughs) why we why do we have to like be around these homeless at the park you have kids it's fucking annoying right yeah they're trying to pass like a new bench goes in at macarthur park and you go i believe jesse jackson told us (laughs) you're doing a they're like you're doing a filibuster they're like we don't do filibusters (laughs) Yeah, like I will speak until my time is out. And then ev- uh, once you you leave every like town hall, whatever, and you like boop boop, you immediately get pulled over. You get a DUI like once a week. And I keep handling them because yeah. I have so much money. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, who gives a shit? Yeah. I go, guys, I'll pay your DUIs yeah. in the city. Yeah, yeah. That's, how, that's what you run on. You'll pay for everyone's yeah. DUI. The only politician that posts where DUI checkpoints are. I go, watch out tonight. I go, this city's corrupt. They're not going to let you drive a mile home. How do they expect you to get home? Yeah. You drove to the bar. Ex- it's a scam. Exactly. It's, it's a, a scam. scam. It's, it's Biden. It's Biden. It's so he can drive the gas prices up. You're damn right, Ben. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Yeah, at a at a podium, being like Fairfax, they normally get you. There's a residential neighborhood full of families. <laughs> Drive down that. Chevy Hill Hills just cut right through. Chevy Hill Hills, you can go ninety down those streets. Mm. I'd be like, do you guys really feel comfortable living amongst all these homeless people? I'm gonna do something about it. I care about them, but listen, the cops are gonna take them. I don't know what they do with them, but you never knew what they were doing with them before. Mm-hmm. Okay, so don't act like all of a sudden now you you're really afraid of what's gonna happen. You just turn a blind eye. That's mm-hmm. what I I go turn, turn a blind, blind eye. eye. It's like Jimmy. Hall off and the Irishman. I'm like, turn a blind eye, yeah. solidarity. It's just a bunch of guys with DUIs. Yeah. Like, turn a turn blind, blind eye. eye. Turn. Look away. <laughs> Look away from old, the horror. It's just old guys Irish that all guys shaking your there. hands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you, Mr. Costa. I was, you know, there <laughs> used to be a Hoverville like right unions. <laughs> there used to be a Hoverville right by me, where you know where I live by the Silver Lake Meadow. You know. There's like these working class guys living yeah. in silver. Yeah. I love I love getting an acai bowl when I'm done with my union job. <laughs> I love getting an acai bowl and a CBD latte. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, Mr. Costa. Yeah, Mr. I'm, Costa. You would, the funny thing is, is you'd probably win, I think, if your whole thing was I'll pay for everyone's DUI in the mm-hmm. city. No, like, no, you can get as many I, as you want. I'll cover all of your I'd legal bills. For you. Here's the thing. Here's kind of why I want to do it. It's a kind of like a test. It's kind of like a like a like a psychological study, because we but realize you, kind of of your own self too. Because po- po- politics are finished. It's it's now a it's a popularity contest. Trump proved that. Like Trump won off of just like I'm gonna go up there and fucking freestyle mm-hmm. and just talk my shit. And I you realize yeah. you connect to a regular person more doing that than you do with like. The whole, you know, just political speech, but you're still lying. Mm-hmm. Like, you're still doing the same stuff Trump does. Trump just goes, yeah, I'm fucking lying. <laughs> Do something about yeah. it. He goes, don't you love to get lied, dude? Yeah. So, like, I, I really think that's the new thing. You're George Santos's, you're fucking the Marjorie Butter uh, Green, or what's that whore's name? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, Marjorie, uh, Marjorie Taylor. Taylor. Marjorie Taylor. Marjorie Butter. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then you got the fucking gun pussy lady. Sure. You know, mm-hmm. uh, rifle, uh, rifle Colorado bitch mm-hmm. and all the jack off, your, you know, your first date. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At, a, at Wicked or whatever. <laughs> We love these people now. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of awesome. So they'll be, they'll be, they'll be like, "Did you hear that Councilman Costa got kicked out of Red Lion again? <laughs> he keeps getting kicked out of bars. <laughs> He's a man of the people. He's a man of the people. He gets thrown ahead first, like a cartoon, <laughs> like out of yeah. bars. Yeah. And he he gets up and he wipes the dust off of him. Yeah. And he goes, "Man, I like the sound of that." <laughs> and he just keeps shredding. Yeah. He takes <laughs> he takes a pork pie hat with the top coming off of it, mm. and he beats the dust yeah. off his. And then pants. wanders, and then <laughs> wow, exactly. There's just foot- call, eighteen wheelers whizzing yeah. by, driving like Mr. Magoo around <laughs> yeah. Silver Lake Reservoir. There's footage of me being like racist, but like even like wrong with my racism. Mm-hmm. Like there's footage of me and like at Panda Express, like hammered, like my 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 tux is like uh, or my suits like undone, mm-hmm. and I'm like, we fucking kicked your ass in Korea. <laughs> I'll do it again. <laughs> You're going, go play some basketball, you fucks. <laughs> Did Trump handled uh, like homosexuality beautiful back in the early to mid 2000s when, you know, still there were people like Barack Obama and Hillary that still weren't for gay marriage. Yeah. You had Trump here on The Apprentice when he asked that guy if he's gay. I haven't seen that clip. Have you seen that clip Mm-mm. when he asked the guy no. if he's gay? Mm-mm. He's on The Apprentice. He's like, now nah, you don't like, you don't like uh, these lovely ladies. You don't like them. He's like, no, they're very beautiful, but it's not really my thing. He goes, well, you're gay, right? You're a gay man? He goes, yes, yes, Mr. Trump, I am gay. He goes, well, that's why they have menus at restaurants, I suppose. You know, <laughs> you know some guy comes in, he loves steak. Someone else, they might hate steak for yeah. some reason. I mean, I don't Listen, I don't, I don't like that's lobster, so but you can still put your dick in it. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. But he makes a lot of sense. He does. And it's actually kind of a beautiful way to put it. And he's, let's be honest, you... I think meeting in the middle is the most empathetic thing you can do with a single human being Mm -hmm. because it's so condescending to champion their thing. Yeah. Because Trump doesn't go, I I think it's great that you're gay. It's actually better to be gay. Right. Oh, my God. I'm so happy that you're a gay guy. Exactly. It's very fraudulent and condescending. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He just goes, yeah, we're different. He gives a shit. He goes, I mean, I couldn't imagine (laughs) sucking a cock. But I'll tell you, it's not my thing. Doesn't mean it can't be yours. If it's beautiful to you, then you do. Yeah, yeah it's, it's beautiful. I think it's disgusting. <laughs> Makes me want to vomit, but God bless. But that's the most, he was actually the most progressive person 
on gay marriage at the time when it came to yeah. more than any uh, democratic politician at the time i i think mm-hmm. yeah. it, any prominent person even even still now he's very there's a there's a clip of his newest speech going viral he's like look at all these people here men i'll kiss every man and woman here the men maybe not as enthusiastically but that's okay yeah <laughs> people are like this is the greatest thing i've ever seen well I love it, him. it was really we were everyone that hated him was such a fucking just petulant child the whole time and 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 in the name of wanting things to be better and like mm-hmm. fighting like an evil guy when he was the most he was the easiest guy to figure out psychologically all you had to do was say you liked him and and, and I I love you Donald Trump and then he'd listen to you and you could get your thing passed yeah he really doesn't give a flying fuck about like the policies mm-hmm. he just wants you to like him Kanye, Kim Kardashian, they just pretend like a kind of Kanye liked him, I think. But like Kim Kardashian, like just fake liked him. Sure. Got into the White House and then like he signed, like he was like, all right, I'll let go of these black people from prison. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like Meek right. Mill can yeah. go. And then the year yeah. later, Kanye's like, can you put them back in prison, yeah. please? <laughs> <laughs> No, he's fantastic. He's a fantastic. He's, I'm man. just saying, he's at you know for everybody that hates the woke mind virus, you know Trump might be you know patient zero for that because he was he really loved gay people in 2003. Well, That's all I'm saying. He, yeah, he, maybe you're gay if you love Trump. Actually, also my, my one mm-hmm. of my my favorite things is he get boo he gets booze at every rally he does because he's still pro vaccine. So he'd be like, I encourage you, get a booster. The crowd boos. He goes, that's all right. Boo me. I don't care. And then they start cheering. <laughs> they cheer again. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, don't get it if you want. It's a beautiful booster. A beautiful booster I made with the scientists. He loves the booster because he knows it's killing Democrats. <laughs> He's like, I think we should have more basketball players have congenital heart defects. <laughs> Brody James, that's my work. I think it's beautiful. He goes, LeBron never supported me, and look what's happened to his job. It's yeah. a terrible thing. But- we turn black people's hearts into confetti, and I think that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at poor Silk. Poor Silk. Poor Silk. A big, gross black heart gave out. <laughs> Poor Silk, a greasy heart threw up. I think, he, I think he literally said her big black heart like gave out. No, he did. Something. He tweeted. He goes, her big black heart gave out. <laughs> he posted on True Social. That was, no, dude, that was long. That was word for word <laughs> what he said. Her yeah. Big black heart. Yeah. Her and big, then he, big beautiful black heart big, gave out. Her big beautiful green mile heart couldn't take it. <laughs> And it, had, it was full of a bunch of flies that were cancer. Yeah, blind side arteries. Yeah. Diamond, she actually touched me and she removed my uh, urinary tract infection. <laughs> she blew a bunch of flies out of her big black mouth. And then he claimed at her funeral, he's like, I've never even heard of Diamond. I don't know who Diamond is, but I, she's, got a, she's got big shoes to fill with silk being gone. <laughs> it's like they're literally their whole thing was that they it, they were twins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, they're like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. He's like, I love Laura. I've never heard of Hardy. <laughs> No idea who Hardy is. Love Laurel. Listen, I love a straight man with no foil. I think it's great. Sure, everybody loves Costello, but who's this Abbott guy everybody's going on about? I love Rob. Don't know anything about Big. <laughs> big, his big, big black car came out. <laughs> big, big. Oh, man. We should all watch Rob and Big one night. Just to like yeah, pretend it's 2006 show. again. It would be fun rewatching that and being like, "Oh, that guy's going to become like TV Hitler for Rob Deerdeck." Yeah. So what is what does he do exactly? What Rob from Robin Big? Rob, Rob Deerdeck is the ridiculous guy now. So that's the same guy. Yeah. So if you turn on MTV, it's just him and that dumb retarded whore just like laughing at it, like <laughs> yeah. you know a kid in like Palestine like getting a skateboard thrown through his head. Yeah. You know, and he's going like, "Oh shit." He goes, anyway, this is going to be the next eight days of programming on yeah. TV. I've always wanted to write on a show like that. It seems so easy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's ins- it, that, that show was fascinating because they were like, we've got to do like a show where we watch clips and we have like like people comment on them. Who should we get? Retarded whores. <laughs> people that can't even put words together. Right. <laughs> and they go, I think our fan base is kind of too retarded to know these are internet videos. So what if I have a big laptop I mm. can stand on? <laughs> Because people might think I just we, these are sketches we made. Whoever that retarded lady is, she should be like in a crib. Mm-hmm. She should be in a crib, and they cut her, and she goes, yeah. yeah, and like as she's talking, cum gurgles her up binky, out of her mouth. Her binky's a cock. <laughs> it's literally. A I she hate should, that fucking she woman. She should be. 
she should be on the her sole job in life should be yeah. all, chained up in the yacht from Taken and just getting <laughs> yeah like there's a there's a fucking pal like a fucking Iranian guy an Iranian businessman with a chainsaw just going <laughs> just diagonally across yeah. her stupid uh, torso she should be forced to live in a shark tank uh, <laughs> an evil uh, like an evil lair shark yeah. tank mm-hmm. you just see her floating God, around she that should cunt. legally she should have to live underwater mm-hmm. she yeah. literally should with no oxygen mm-hmm. <laughs> she's like fine by me <laughs> fine yeah. by me she, yeah, she's down there for like 40 years <laughs> Just fine. Yeah. Because she's she somehow figured out a way to live with no uh, brain cells. Yep. Yeah. Dude, speaking of... <laughs> her, her body's actually controlled by her implants. Yeah. 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 It's like uh, The Last of Us for whores. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's her fucking She name? just opens her mouth and lets a, like, it just a tiny fish swims into it. Yeah. Like, I got it. Uh, uh, yeah. Fish swims in and carries out a little uh, bit of cum that she swallowed. Yeah. Uh, Takes it back to his little finding Nemo uh, home. I had the... I had the you you saying the thing with the chainsaw and taken and stuff? Sure. I had the like f- funniest Uber drive. Like if you were God Ooh. and you're like, I'm gonna give one. For, I'm gonna give Ooh. one down to Ben t- today. Yeah, he's been going through a, a rough time. Yeah, Ben's about to. His life's gonna get ruined by this bitch kid. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna give him a funny weird guy. Dude, he gave me he gave me Cholo with diamond earrings. Mm-hmm. He gave me gaunt Cholo. The, Gaunt? Yeah, like very, very thin Cholo. Okay. He was wearing like the Dickies, like starched, uh, like zip down beige, like businessman Cholo. Like, okay, right. You know the type of Cholo I'm talking. And he talked like he does like, like he talked like this. Uh, and I'm like, great. Yeah. Like, this is amazing. Yeah. You just, I, you setting up your phone to record in the back seat. <laughs> I look in the cup holder. He has a mug that has, uh, it has the clown from It on it. Fantastic. It has Jason, the guy with the mm-hmm. mask that kills all the campers. And it has uh, Freddy Krueger and then uh, the guy from Halloween, uh, Mike Myers on it. Yeah. And I was like, you like scary movies? He's like, I, I like love scary movies. I like love and spooky movies. Uh, me and my girlfriend who like, she looks like retarded and shit. <laughs> my girlfriend dresses like the Bride of Chucky and we go to like uh, Halloween Horror Nights and I try to... We go to Not Scary Farm and I try to fist fight all the clowns that slide up to me. Like I just, I love the spooky season. I go to a haunted house and I try, I try, I try to kill a guy, yeah. just like a mummy. He lives at Not Scary Farm. Yeah. He just for the month of October he takes off work and he's just walking around like it's so spooky. Can you guys scare my big titted weird girlfriend who dresses like? Who dresses like Jack Skellington, yeah. but she's really fat. She dresses like all fucked up. <laughs> she's all fucked Cause up. Cause I'm gonna be like like shadow boxing <laughs> the air in the dark. I'm just gonna be like. Uh, so he, <laughs> dude, he. Uh, I was like, oh, you like scary movies? He's like, yeah, I like fuck with them. And yeah. I was like, yeah, I you fuck with scary movies. Yeah, I fuck with them. Yeah, I was like, what have you seen recently that's like really good? He's like, the Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> that was a spooky. Uh, Halloween Town, that was a spooky, very a spooky. He goes, I just tell my girlfriend to hide, <laughs> and then I come home. <laughs> She's fucked up. She shaved her eyebrows, fool. Yeah, she told me to like come over and break in and shit between like ten and twelve. Yeah, like, she was fucked up. She's in, like, it's got like consensual non consent, and it's just kind of like weirding me out and shit. I mean, I still do it because like. <laughs> It makes me bust hella hard, but like, just like, let me rape you. Like, don't make all these rules around me assaulting you, you know? Dude, so he uh, he goes, oh, he goes, have you seen Saw 10? And I was like, I have to be honest with you, I haven't seen any of the Saw movies. Saw 10? He, yeah. he saw Saw 10. He's seen all 10 Saw movies. Yeah. He loves Saw. It's like wow. his favorite movie. Yeah. He's, he's seen 25 hours of Saw movies. It's his Fast and the Furious. Dude, yeah. he he's, loves it. He's literally in a movie theater being like, that's a fucked up trap. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new fucked up trap, dude. He goes, dude, what, what if he what if he pulled out a notebook and he's like, I actually made some like fucked up saw traps to show you. <laughs> like I've got some ideas. I'm like Saw's biggest fan. I'm like a big like what if you put like a tube in your ass and like put a cockroach in it? You're like, what's the he's like, it's just like fucked up. Yeah. He goes, what people don't get about the Saw movies is it's like kind of crazy if you think about it, because like he puts them in situations that makes them be better people, but he's bad. 
Yeah. So like basically he's Jigsaw is bad, but he's like good. Yeah. Also. also it's like it's fucked with your head yeah. if you Fool, think about he, it. He he fucking kills them, which means like they don't come back. <laughs> but like he trying to make them better. Mm-hmm. That's what he kept saying. Yeah. I haven't seen Saw. They tried to make them better? No, no, no. He Jigsaw like tries to make you better. Oh like he yeah. fucks with you to like make you better. So like is he bad because he's trying to make you good? Oh god, he's looking at Jigsaw like it's homeboy <laughs> industries. <laughs> He's like, they're like, Jigsaw, like, just trying to reform, like, fools and shit. Yeah. He's like, plus, uh, plus that little puppet guy kind of looks like my abuela. <laughs> Dude, so this is, I almost fucking lost it. I go, uh, I go, so I haven't seen it. Like, it's Jigsaw, that little thing, like, that little puppet on the bike. And he's mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's Jigsaw, but, like, there's, like, a voice <laughs> for Jigsaw. And I was like, yeah, I know, but, like. Like who is like who plays the guy? He's like no no no. In the movie, it's like a puppet, and then like they have a voice like for the puppet. Uh, and I go no no no. I go I go I know that who's playing the puppet. He's like no, you don't understand what I'm saying. Like there's not actually a guy who looks like he that. He's one of those guys that watches movies and he thinks he's, he doesn't know about actors. Yeah, or, he's like no. Like, is Chucky the doll like a baby? Like when he's one of those guys that when a movie ends, he goes the fuck's a director. Yeah. He goes, why every movie show me these names? What are the credits at the end? <laughs> what like? the fuck is this? He goes, this? oh, he goes, rest in peace. He thinks it's all people that died in the movie. <laughs> in memory of. Yeah. 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 He goes, and then oh, he gets, those he, are their baptized names. <laughs> then he gets in his car. He's got a wing on the back because he thinks it'll make it fly. <laughs> He tried to explain to me for five minutes that he's like, no, like nobody, like the puppet is just a puppet. Like there's no actor that looks like that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I got yeah. You know that. Like, so it's like humans are made out of like cells and shit. <laughs> And like puppets are made out of like wood shit. And I finally got, I finally got through to him. I was like, yeah, but who's like who's playing him? He goes, oh, that's actually a good question. It never occurred to me. I swear to God, he goes, it never occurred to me that like someone's like doing the voice for it. I was like, all right, yeah. I was like, all right, dude. He starts getting angry. He's like, fucking Jigsaw did the voice. He just thinks there's a guy out there named Jigsaw. No, but now I kind of wonder, like, do people watch Chucky the doll and think it's a baby that they, like, get to play a doll? Yeah, that's yeah, why fully, movies work. Yeah. I fully think that's half what Half the country happens. can't read. Mm-hmm. Literally half the country Literally cannot, the country cannot country read can't at a read. second degree level. So it's nothing to do with cholos. It's everybody. So mm-hmm. they He's the just one of real. many dumb people. Yeah. Yeah. They can't read. I guess for like boomers and stuff, it makes sense because when you watch Star Wars in the seventies, you go, "Oh, there's a little guy inside R two D two who's mm-hmm. like all fucked up and like doing all the beeps yeah, and loops, right?" Magic guy. Yeah, but now, so now a boomer must watch Saw Ten and be like, "Who the fuck? Where'd they get this small little puppet guy with the tiny <laughs> little legs and arms with the fucked up face?" Yeah, I think that's what what genuinely happens. And by the way, if you do look like that guy, you talk about job security. They the can't go to puppet? It. yeah. If you if you look like the jigsaw puppet guy, you I mean no one's ever gonna take your job. That's you true. don't have to worry about that. There shit are at like all. there are like three midgets who've ever made money in Hollywood. Mm. Yeah, that's why really the best jobs in Hollywood is being like uh, Andre the Giant or something, where you're this big fucked up freak and they can't hire anybody else to play you. Yeah, like, yeah. I get three roles yeah. a year no matter what. You cornered all. the market. Yeah. yeah, I cornered a market nobody knows exists, so I have no competitors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yigsa. Yigsa. Like, I saw Yigsa, and I was like, um, so in my free time, I make uh, candle uh, tributes to, like, all the people who died and saw. <laughs> and I put it. Yeah. And candle. I put them on the side of the highway uh, just for the people who died in the Saw movies. <laughs> yeah. Like, I get, like, a bunch of big, tall candles with, like, a woman with, like, tits and a goat face. <laughs> And I put him on. The, I put him on the one ten in the lanes. He, he did the classic shit of like, honestly, like no movie really like scares me though. Yeah, like, like I never have actually been like scared in a movie because so. I'm like so badass. Like I want to fight every movie I see. <laughs> me and my girl, my my chica, <laughs> my ruka, my ruka. We just go to the theaters and I just try to I, I try to fuck up everybody <laughs> I see. And she's like, No, Edward, don't. I'm like, Bitch. Bitch, you're lucky I had too many CBD sodas. I can't do it. Uh, yeah, he was I mean, like every, my favorite guy. Yeah, I mean, every time I go to the movie theater now, I'm like, God, I am swimming in a bowl of retardation oh, every time yeah. you walk outside. They yeah. ruin almost any showing now no, just by I, being retarded. I bought tickets for Killers of the Flower Moon on Thursday, but it's at like a Megaplex, and I'm just like, God damn, it's just going to yeah. be Yeah, it's going to be a nightmare, it's man. It's going to be bad. Well, there's no <laughs> classic theaters left. 
I know. I can't go to the Vista anymore. The the Chinese theaters immediately sold out. Yeah. You know, the Chinese theater tricks you. They go, no, no, there's more showings. You're just seeing it at the mall Chinese theater, mm-hmm. it's, which is just like a shitty theater for yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Me and yeah. Sean Baker would always go to the same one. Really? In, in uh, the Lumiere in uh, Beverly Hills. Wait, you hung out with Sean Baker? No, he would just always be there. And he was like, there. Sean oh. Baker was in here. He was just at the showing before you. I was like, that's cool. Get a life. <laughs> yeah. Get a how do you get a life? He was filming a movie on an iPod Nano. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sean Baker. Yeah, but, I love him. But fuck Tangerine and that whole ad campaign. Yeah, really. Tangerine really Fucking sucks ass. The stupid iPhones. Yeah, I'll give him a pass. He gets a pass I'll give me. him a pass. I he, love it. He's maybe one of my favorite new directors, that guy. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's like the... It's a theater that it's empty. There's a... <clears throat> There's a man with an autoimmune disorder who runs it with big glasses, and he gets mad at you if you if you don't have a mask. Yeah, and no one's there, and popcorn's a dollar. The, yeah. But then that theater is only there because rich people like to pretend they care about things like theaters. Right. So they pay a bunch of money to have it stay open, even though rich people don't go out and they don't do anything. That's they true. just want to know it's there. You know what I've it always wanted to do? To them. I've always wanted to go see like a fucking. I've always wanted to like go see like a Marriage Story, but like at the Magic Johnson Theater. <laughs> And just see how that goes. A Noah Baumbach movie. I didn't even know he had a theater in Inglewood. Oh, are you kidding me? The Magic Johnson theaters? Yeah. Yeah, they're great. We should go we should go watch movies there. It's probably way more fun. The Magic Johnson Theater. Yeah, we should yeah. watch we should watch Killers of the Flower Moon at the Magic Johnson yeah. Theater. Is it like a is it like a like a black run theater? It's like a red lobster with a screen. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's an Alamo draft house, but with other things. So they have a popcorn machine, but sh- popcorn shrimp it's, are coming out. It's people, people are putting it's, it in a bucket. It's, it's, it's you're watching the movie and you hear a lot of people pronounce it like it's scrimp. <laughs> people going, bring me more scrimp. <laughs> scrimp. Can I get some scrimp? There's like a new like little Wayne. He's like nine years old. He's getting his dick sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you walk up to the concession, uh, you're like, all right, let me get some perp, yeah. um, some some oils, yeah. concentrates. Uh, you go there, just you, you, the last half of the movie, like Blueface and Krishan Rock are just like beating each other in the front row. <laughs> He's giving her an abortion with his hand. <laughs> I would walk in and ask him, <laughs> I would walk in and ask if his gay yeah. son is there. He's telling her to eat more hot tamales <laughs> so the baby dies. He thinks hot tamales are like plan B. God damn it! Dude. That's so funny. Shove, shoving red hots up her pussy. Yeah. God damn it! I've only I've only done one black movie theater. I saw Paranormal Activity in like 2009 in a black movie, like all black movies. That sounds theater. amazing. It was it was fantastic, dude. I really do. I'm not. I you know it sounds you know racist and whatever, but sure. like, but I my favorite experiences have been watching movies. In a predominantly black theater. No, it's, it's great. such an experience, dude. I literally it's so fun. I watched the movie. I was sitting, I think, between Diamond and Silk, and it was just fantastic. <laughs> like literally, the big titted white lady from White from Paranormal Activity, like walking in the closet, and literally just like a stereotype, being like, "You stupid evil bitch, you dumb white <laughs> yep. honky bitch ass." And I'm like, this is a celebration of life. Yep. Yeah. My my friend went to a black movie theater in Houston. Yeah. And he brought in two forties in his coat. And it, it was for the showing of Precious. Mm. Wow. And he said they were two great big fat black women behind him <laughs> and like a really yeah. skinny white guy in the front row with a like a fat black lady. Yeah. And they're going, Why are we in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> It's like Uncle June watching Curb. Yeah. They go, Bobby, why am I on the television set? They go, that's not you. That's Gabriel Sadigui or whatever her name is. Remember the scene? For anybody who forgets the uh, plot of Precious, remember when her stepdad is raping her and giving her HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. Mm, mm. And so then the mom comes after her own daughter who's getting molested by her stepdad with the frying pan. They start screaming, oh, get her ass. Get her fucking ass. What get the, what the fuck? Yeah, like, yeah, she fucked your man. Get her ass. Oh, no. Like, they totally missed the point. Oh, the no. Dude. Okay. That's insane. Like, get, get, yeah. yeah, protect your mans. Yeah. Dude, like, I remember. She had to fuck her up. Dude. She's fucking her mans. I remember. <laughs> I remember seeing that movie and getting to the scene where she steals a bucket of chicken and runs down the street. I think I blacked out. I blacked out because I go. You're like Hank Schrader. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I go, oh, oh. You drive into someone's yard and like, yeah. stumble out of the car. Yeah, I'm stumbling to the aisle and vomiting. <laughs> oh, no. They're having to drag me out of the theater. <laughs> I remember, I remember, like, see that scene. I'm like, I'm like, you cannot, like. <laughs> I'm like, how did they let this happen in America? Yeah. The projectionist leans over. He goes, you guys want me to rewind that and play that one more time? I usually don't do that, but uh, most yeah. crowds have been asking me to yeah. play, run that shit back he one goes, more time. He goes, I've actually added in a bunch of deleted scenes for you, gentlemen. I can tell you would like this. <laughs> Why does she steal a bucket of fried chicken? Because she's fucking hungry. <laughs> she's hungry. <laughs> she's living, living in, in poverty. Does she steal because she's living in poverty or because she's hungry? She eats it because she thinks the chemicals in it will kill the AIDS. <laughs> is the, the movie is like a doctor's like, uh, ma'am, you're very fat and you have AIDS. Mm-hmm. And she's like, and then she just grabs a bucket of chicken and starts running. It's like, what is this? Yes. And then Mariah Carey pops up without makeup and they're like, wow, that's really brave. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is she, she in the slightly, movie? She looks slightly less fuckable. Yeah, she plays the social worker. Social worker, yeah. yeah. I wish things with her and Nick Cannon would yeah. worked out. There are some things. her big tits. Her big tits and Nick Cannon's 14 kids. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. And he definitely has a thin penis, by the way, but go on, Jace. He looks like an asshat needle dick guy. Oh, me. for sure, yeah. Does Long he still but do Wild and Out, Nick Cannon? I mean, does anyone here watch Wild and Out? No, I mean, it's not on any channel, but they post reels and it's still like a thing, apparently. Yeah, I think shows will just exist forever. And yeah. they keep, if, they you're, keep, yeah. if you're retarded enough, they actually pump Wild and Out directly into your TV set. <laughs> They've identified your home by, for being retarded, and there's like a seat. It's like they live. If you're retarded enough, they'll send you like a thing that just says obey and then mm-hmm. Nick Cannon's face. Just says buy stuff. Uh, Don't think. Yeah. yeah, I think if I had a time machine, though, I would go watch Precious in a black movie theater. Ah, that would be great. If we were in it, I mean, would they let you rent out a theater and do like one screening of Precious? Perhaps. I've thought about doing a Lemon Party thing where all the listeners of Lemon Party in LA can get together and we because I think yeah. to rent out a movie theater, it's like six hundred bucks. That'll be the the first theater That's with multiple fun. shootings. Oh, we could do like a live show before and then like thirty minutes and then start the movie. Oh, we could actually. That'd be really. Yeah. That'd be great. You don't want to do an hour because movies are long. So you do like thirty. We talk yeah. some shit. We talk about the movie that's about to play, and then, and then we, we watch, watch a favorite of ours. Yeah, The Whale. Cool. Yes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Can we please? And I. I don't want to go back to the Whale era. That was a rough time. It really is. God, I was explaining to my girlfriend today. Like, there really is a moment where you figure out new, Ben's new autistic like obsession, and you're like. God, this one's much worse than the others. Yeah, I can see you guys sort of emotionally being like, all right, and you grab a seatbelt, and you're like, all right, yeah. we're getting a, like it's a road trip or something. I'm about mm-hmm. to go 100. Yeah, I'm like, okay, it's golf. Okay, good, good. Oh, right, thank God we're, we're into golf now. <laughs> the whale was driving me up a wall. Yeah, you saw it nine times. Yeah, and I didn't have a car, so I would walk like nine miles to a movie theater to watch mm-hmm. it. That's insane. You hitchhiked to see the whale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He had a big cardboard box that said, need to see the whale. Yeah, Pee Wee Herman style. Mm-hmm. That is a good idea, though, Ben. What? To we all watch a movie. I thought it would kick ass, because I know yeah. like Chappelle does that shit with, uh, when he's on the road. He'll run yeah. out of movie theater and like smoke a bunch of weed in it and, like you know I guess, watch a movie. It I would be know. cool to get killed by a guy dressed like uh, like Batman at our first live event. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It would literally be like two shooters stand up at the same time, and they're like, oh, like, do you want to yeah. yeah. like, stand off they do mass rock, shooting? They do rock, paper, scissors to see who shoots yeah. up the theater. Yeah, it'd be like a Tarantino, like Mexican standoff, but with our fans. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, but I, I, I think it'd be fun. And we could all, like, you know, just, like, smoke weed in the movie theater or whatever. It'd be sick. You uh, could drink dude. again. Hell yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I could start drinking again because there's no, obviously, in a movie theater, like, anything goes. <clears throat> yeah. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, you can't jack off in them anymore, apparently. That's a big note. They installed the... Uh, they cut that out. Yeah, the night vision uh, cameras mm-hmm. in movie theaters. So is that a real thing, by the way? What? Because people have told me that those cameras are in every movie theater across the United States of America, and they yeah. can all see what's going on. I don't on. know. I, I will tell you, I was going to go... I, you know, Last year, I wanted to go get jacked off in a movie theater, so I Googled it, and they're like, don't do it, because you can get put on the, the sex offender list. That's crazy, because they're, yeah. wa- they're watching, watching? Yeah, yeah. Like they can. Like, I don't know if they just detect like a hand job happening like, yeah. next to like a bag of popcorn or something. Aren't yeah. they the perverts if they're watching like 16 year olds giving hey. each other hand See, jobs? that's the thing. Like if you can see it, hey, you get to keep it. Go jack off to it, buddy. Yeah. Good for you. I don't you even know? know why. Like I, I feel bad for buying tickets to this movie. I'm like, I could probably just walk in. 
The last two years, every time I go to a theater, no one takes my fucking ticket. Yeah, I've noticed that. I'm not too. kidding. I went to a movie. I went. I saw The Departed again with my dad last week mm-hmm. at a theater. My dad walked in and he just goes, "Yeah, us. We were." And they were just like, "Yeah, whatever." Like, yeah, they're like, "All right, fuck off." Cares. Yeah. Fuck off. Stop talking to me. <laughs> they can tell it's going to be an annoying conversation. Yeah. So they go, yeah, yeah, sure. They <laughs> literally don't even want to like, because mm-hmm. f- also they know nobody even cares about movies unless there's unless it's you know about a guy flying. <laughs> so they they're like yeah they, there needs to be a cape or something yeah. like that yeah people are like I don't you have to yeah. have a cape I don't care about movies unless the guy can't die and there's actually no conflict because of that exactly yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah, by the way it's, I saw like someone was like they like Twitter couldn't believe someone was bagging Florence Pugh or something like that like Florence Pugh's dating some guy or something like a Zach big Braff. I don't know. She's uh, maybe Zach Braff. she was dating Zach Braff for two years, and it was actually really funny because people were like, "Why is this happening?" And then somebody found a picture of her dad when she was eight years old, spitting image of Zach Braff currently, uh, mm. like with the Chad face or pre Chad surgery, post Chad surgery. Interesting. Him currently, so but, it looked yeah. like, the dad looked just like Zach Braff. The dad looked exactly like Zach Braff. So it was like Holocaust propaganda. <laughs> He basically he turned you know in SpongeBob when sometimes they'll have a zoomed in picture that's like a painting of them that's like over the top yeah it's all like fucked that. up all yeah. fucked up he mm-hmm. looks like Squidward like what happened to Zach Braff I liked he had that run I I liked Garden State and then he just that was it for him I think he's just a guy he looks like he just loves whippets too much yeah he would just do whippets and coke and just drive around L A aimlessly in the fog and like he probably crashed into a couple of Demore's pizzas and that was that I like to hear that. Okay. Lift actually like I always respect when I find that like actors like get whiskey drunk and they throw haymakers down at like the worst restaurant yeah, you've yeah. ever heard. The only actors I like are ones that like yeah, yeah. like have problems. Big that's, thumbs up. I did I did like figuring out that Toby Maguire is like a huge piece of shit. And is like amazing at poker. Like was won millions of dollars playing poker in like underground casinos. That really sucks. In New York. That's really gay. You don't gay. like that? That's really gay, actually. That he plays poker? That's really gay. Well No, that means like he's like like miserable and like hardcore yeah you think so that's what i'm saying dude, people that play poker are fucking insane <laughs> yeah. dude it struck me as a thing people get into because they think it makes them interesting is they're like really good at like black those Jack are those something. are guys who buy one poker table and they bring their friends over and they're like okay we're gonna do yeah. five cards mm-hmm. and they fuck the, all the rules up and they have the little coins got and it but the guys that really do it are fucking nuts mm-hmm. like they get in bets where it's like you have to like get like tits <laughs> like if i win and like, yeah, then the guy, guy will literally oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, plant yeah, bolt ons. Okay, yeah, like, that actually rules. They're yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. nuts. Cause Cause they're, they're all on like Ritalin and shit. Yeah. yeah. They're, dude, yeah. He's, like, he's like Michael Clayton. He's in the basement of like Chinatown, like just like Chinese guys yelling at him. And one guy's like betting his actual pinky finger because mm-hmm. he's already lost his mortgage and, in his house. And he has to cut it off John Wick style. Yeah, exactly. And give it to a guy in a napkin. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that actually kicks ass now that I think about it. I don't know why I was hating on it. Just the idea of a guy that like has his own like poker chips in his house and like cards and stuff and is well, like that's you know no. is yeah. watching like YouTube videos about how to count cards. No 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 no, 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 no. You yeah. go you just go blind to the to the to the casino and you like throw away your whole family's like <laughs> life savings. <laughs> yeah. That's what you do, and that guy's cool as shit. Mm-hmm. That guy's awesome. What a risk taker mm-hmm. he is. That guy does that specifically and it's a fun like uh, uh psychology. It's a guy who does it specifically for the moment when he's finally ruined his his life walks outside and he smokes a cigarette and he knows he's he's making the phone call where his wife is going to leave him finally yeah and he's like god it, it rules because i really want to kill myself <laughs> but i don't want to but i kind of do it's so free it must be so freeing it must feel like you're kind of flying mm-hmm. because you're falling and imagine, if you're falling for long enough you think you're flying imagine mm-hmm, mm-hmm. imagine you have your your beautiful wow. daughter it's poetic <laughs> Imagine you have your beautiful daughter. You're you're doing well in America. It's a tough year to live. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, you know what? I got forty grand in the bank. Everything's going great. What if I put that all on one one roulette spin? Your mm-hmm. daughter's entire future. Think about how rock hard you would yeah. get for forty five seconds. Because you don't have the balls to actually kill your family. <laughs> So you go, I'll just kill him financially. Yeah, meta- I didn't kill him. The the ball did. The ball by did. By landing in double zero. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's like that movie Lost in America. Yeah. But uh, his wife, his wife does it all. Albert Brooks's wife like loses all their money like, oh, in yeah, Vegas yeah, yeah, yeah. in the middle of the night. It's great. Yeah. yeah. And that happens all the time. Like like uh, casinos actually have files for degenerate gamblers. And like if you're trying to stop gambling, they'll call you up and 
they've actually been caught like teaching people how to get a second mortgage on their house so they can get 40 grand and go back to the casino yeah yeah mm. Remember that movie Twenty One, where it was all those fucking like gay Harvard students like getting yeah. in, getting into yeah, poker. it was the MGMT like time to pretend. Kevin Spacey was teaching them all how to like yeah. fuck kids, count, yeah. count to fourteen, count to 14 and fuck yeah. it, yeah. yeah, fuck the cards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he goes now now if you go over fourteen, put your dick back in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing Frank Underwood yeah. for some reason. Yeah, mm-hmm. I by the way, speaking of killing your family, yeah, mm-hmm. I have a friend who he told me the other day. Mm. He that he killed his family. <laughs> yeah, that he's going to kill his family. And I said, very good. <laughs> very good. There you go, brother, I've been there. <laughs> brother. I just can't be genuine for a second and stop a man from massacring his yeah, whole family. Mm, you you have to be ironic about a guy literally like like telling you he's mm. going to commit a horrific crime. Yeah. yeah, he goes, I'm having fantasies about like uh, taking out my family and like, putting them in a big burlap sack after I drug them and dropping them in a river. And I go, thug life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there's a pause. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you're in court. You're in court defending yourself. They're playing clips of Lemon Party. You're like, Your Honor, this is my likeness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This man does not understand what reality is. <laughs> yeah. Your friend com- confesses to wanting to murder his family, and then there's a pause. You go, have you seen that video of that really fat guy shoving an ass up his own ass? <laughs> I'll get it up on the yeah. screen right now. They hold up a big envelope. They're like, this is the gun the man used to kill his family. I'm like, hey, there's Skittles in there. <laughs> <laughs> you just Hangover <laughs> three, anybody? <laughs> Hangover three, lost in Bangkok. Anyone? <laughs> Bueller, anyone? <laughs> People are throwing fruit at yeah. me. Oh my god! Yeah. The, ga- <laughs> the, the judge is sticking the gavel through your eye. The judge beats you to death with a hammer. <laughs> the bailiff open <laughs> yeah, fires. The, bailiff so. open fires. <laughs> The whole you suck so much ass that it causes people to get like a rage virus mm-hmm. that takes over their brain. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, oh, but my friend, he told me the other day randomly that he actually knew a kid who when he was 21 years old, so he had a sister, a mom and a dad. One day he's just at the breakfast table before he goes to school and his dad uh, hears a uh, uh, a gunshot upstairs and then he, he's like was that like a gunshot and his dad walks down and points a gun at him it's the last thing he remembers and apparently then he went in the other room and his sister was like in the living room and he shot her and then he blew his brains out in the living room and he killed everybody and the kid actually came out of a coma four weeks later and they're like yeah your dad killed everybody and he didn't leave a note and then he shot himself and no one knows why he did that and he was like, and they were like, and this is your life now. Yeah. And he was like, holy shit. And then that's, then he just kept living his life after that. And he's, he has no idea why his dad did that. His dad was like a totally normal guy. He killed shit. the whole family and killed himself. <laughs> what was the, no autopsy, like toxicology or anything? No, nothing. He was just, he just decided he one just morning a, that he was, it was, listen the, to this one, was the end. Listen just, to one lemon yeah. party app. He was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was just a regular American he was man. A, he was a yellow king, and his name yeah. wasn't on the episode. I forgot to put it in the credits. <laughs> he and was he just had enough. He was just your average American man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 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 fucked up. It's always the most regular dude. It mm. seems like where it's mm. like, yeah, he worked at KPMG, and you know, he had a decent job. And Jesus, but the only he was the only guy that survived. The son, yeah, everybody else died. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus it, the Christ. bullet like passed through his brain and stuff and he went in a coma and then they like he's fine now. And he had to yeah. like relearn how to read and stuff, but he's he's mostly fine. Fuck. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy oh. that you like you you go through that and then you're like, "Yeah, and then I just sold aluminum siding <laughs> for like 30 <laughs> years." Yeah. You know. Yeah. So anyway, cuz right. life is precious, but yeah. yeah. Just like on a yeah, like on a first day, like, "Oh yeah, my fa-. so yeah, funny story about me, my dad killed my whole slaughtered my whole family." <laughs> and I I have no idea and why. I have no idea why. Anyway, I'll never know why. Place? I'll never know why. But you know, anyway, here at Leslie's Pool Supplies, <laughs> we believe in. Uh... Yeah, I would love a guy who, who like you mm. tell somebody they're like, "Oh my god, you must be like really fucked up." He's like, "You know what? You win some, you lose some." Yeah, he goes, "You, know? you live and learn. <laughs> you live and learn." Yeah, let the apples fall where they may. You know. To be fair, it wasn't Monday. <laughs> Mondays, am I right? <laughs> yep. He goes, "My dad's sarcasm was loading." <laughs> Yep, personality buffering. 
Uh, but uh, imagine the trust issues you'd have with everyone in your life forever. When a member of your family does that, yeah, your father, a who seemingly you. good dad who there's nothing wrong with, just decides one day to kill everyone. I mean, I just don't, I can't comprehend that. What is that? Is that like someone who's a complete sociopath and then they're completely fed up at I don't point? understand when it just comes out of nowhere and it's with the family. You mm-hmm. know, you see stories all the time of like kid kills his parents because like they put him on timeout. You know, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. ha, like, not, it's like a, like a teen too. Like you should have some of your wits. You know what I mean? Like mm, you should yeah. know the When you kill somebody, they don't come yeah, back. Yeah, like I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think it's uh, microplastics. <laughs> Are the vaccine? The or, vaccine. Or 5G. Could be 5G. 5G. I yeah. don't know. Maybe it's just really fun to kill your whole family, you know? Yeah, maybe he was taking a shower that morning and he started thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And he got so hard, he busted the glass in his shower door. He's in a glass. He's in a, a, one of those nice glass showers mm-hmm. with the thick glass. With you know what I'm thick, talking about? The thick warped glass. With the yeah. head way up there with the big head. Mm-hmm. Like the, the like jungle rainfall water. Yeah, like it's rainfall. Yeah. yeah. And he's soaping up his dick because he hasn't fucked in mm-hmm. like three months. But he doesn't give a shit because he told his wife he loves jacking off over the toilet <laughs> way more anyway. And he convinced himself yeah. for a while he loved jacking off more. Yeah. And he's fucked so little that he stopped asking his wife to fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's yeah. he's lubing his shit up in the shower. <laughs> he tur- he killed his family because he thought they were ghosting him and he wanted to fuck. <laughs> he just shot all of them. He shot them all because he was pissed off. He was like, I've been giving you hints mm-hmm. for years. No one comes on to me. I, the thing I do not get about that is... Man, it's really crazy. The, the, here's the thing I really don't understand about it. I get killing yourself. What I don't understand is I don't understand... You go, oh, but I'd feel so bad if I left my family behind who wants to live, so I'm going to kill them too before I I don't think I it's that. Myself. I think it's a control thing. I think it's like you have this like, massive psychopathic ego where you're like, I brought you in, you know. Oh, I brought, I brought you into you the world, into I take this, you back I'll take out. you back out. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that's a person snapping mentally, or do you think it's like they've always been hiding something, a great big terror, like a... A black cloud they've been sweeping maybe. under a rug their Fucking, whole life. Who knows? That guy's dad could have like had a few, maybe like four to five times in the last 40 years. He just drives through an alleyway and down down and just like shoots a guy like <laughs> Anton Chigurh shooting like a fucking crow yeah. and just keeps going. And he just like, comes home and yeah. he like has a beer and he's just, like, <laughs> stone face. Yeah, stone face. <laughs> shoots a homeless man in the head. <laughs> just keeps going. It keeps yeah. going. And just turns up uh, Almond Brothers. Just turns, just turns up Art Bell and he goes, yeah, the aliens, <laughs> they are out there. <laughs> Who knows? It is, it is easy that, to get away with murder. I think like like what fifty percent of murders go unsolved. Uh, even go yeah, don't even go charged at all. Exactly. Yeah. So who fucking knows? It's there's sick people. It's out weird there. to think that you don't know what people do in the privacy of their own homes. You've no idea. You you could be the, my next door neighbor. They could have a whole room that's it's all, he's painting it all uh, silver yeah. colored, mm-hmm. and he's he's dressing up like the Tin Man, and he's doing this right now. He's going. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You have no That's, idea, and, for, and I have no idea why. There's people. <laughs> that, have you know Ruby Frankie? Who's that? We've talked about her on Hey Watch a little bit. This this woman. She was a she was a parenting influencer. Okay. And her and 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 her videos would be like she would like you know, well you. You know, you didn't clean your room this weekend, so now you're sleeping on the floor and you're eating beans for a month. <laughs> and like, but she thought she was like, like telling people like how to raise their kids. And mm. She had a lot of followers and yeah. stuff, and she was just like white woman in like Salt Lake City and <laughs> seemingly normal family with like a tough love type of just weird thing. Her kids escape her place. They wandering through the desert. You're good. Yeah. And now she's like going to prison for like a long time. I yeah, because prisoners is not a good way uh, yeah. model to raise. Because her and her best them. friend were like running this channel. It was like it was like it was like if Selena and the woman running her like her uh, fan, fan club. club. Yeah, like, yeah. Like they were like, let's just take out. Like let's just torture our families. Mm. I'm not going to shoot you in the face. Well, one day we will shoot your kids in the face. Mm-hmm. And they're, she's, it's crazy, though. Like, who knows what's going on? People that even broadcast themselves. Mm-hmm. You always think, like, but you're, okay, people that are broadcasting themselves can't be doing these horrific things because they're putting themselves out there. 
Like that's insane. Mm-hmm. But the level of ego and like, yeah, she's like she like was torturing. There was that same thing with the Gabriel, the kid in like Lancaster. The the her, it was like on Netflix, the horrific Gabriel story Iglesias. of Gabriel yeah, Iglesias. I'm not fat, I'm fluffy. Yeah, it was where the parents would make him do impressions <laughs> of mufflers all day. Yeah, they kept choking him with Hawaiian yeah. t-shirts. Yeah, they waterboarded him with a Hawaiian. They sit t-shirt. him in a chair, they slap him, and they go, "No, a muffler goes like." Yeah, you get, you get a haircut that looks like a faggot, <laughs> and you do stand up. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 like a different. It was just like a a different level of torture. But yeah, the kids like escaped the house. They were starved. They were, and we're talking Jesus. like mini mm-hmm. minivan, like like Utah family. So yeah, yeah, who knows what's going on? Yeah. People that even like are making money off of like in you know like a guy that like does like a dieting channel where he like goes to the grocery store and he's like, I don't recommend these chips. They have sunflower oil. Seed oils are killing us all. He goes mm. home. He's like talking. He cares about seed oils, and then he's like stabs this kid <laughs> with a pencil that yeah, night, yeah. like every night. Yeah, yeah. But he's like, man, you had seed oil. Like, like he every- captures a stray cat in a net, and he's like skinning it on his front porch. Yeah, like mm-hmm. it's a fit, like with a fish knife. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like he's just insane. Everyone's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's everyone, truly everyone insane. Everyone is truly mentally ill. Yeah, it's kind of insane. I used to have that problem in, in like working in an office all the time because you just have people like everybody is insane, but then like people just cover it with this lacquer of like, hey, it's almost hump day. It's like two days till mm-hmm. TGIF, right? And then I would just always get like this vision of them just like in a dark BDSM club, like getting one of their nipples like ripped off, mm-hmm. yeah. screaming, yeah. And then just like being like, all right, well, that that kept the demons away. Yeah. You ever like look at a coworker and you can like imagine them sawing off a shotgun in their garage. (laughs) Like you can see the whole thing. They're under like a dimly lit Mm -hmm. lamp Mm -hmm. and they just have a shotgun and a vice and they're just for like 30 minutes until they saw through and they hold it up and they go. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I saw I knew a coworker who I who I saw. I had a coworker who I thought was really normal. She was just go, hey, like, Jim. Hey. <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, shut the garage really quick. Hey, all right. I'm like, great. I have to kill my neighbor now. <laughs> Fuck. They're like, damn it. Yeah. No, uh, I, had a, I had a coworker who she was just like a nice, normal lady. I was like, oh, she's, you know, quiet, like doesn't really talk. And then I saw her and her husband on Hinge and she was like posting like, yeah, so my husband likes to get chained up in hotel rooms and watch like grown men fuck me. I was like, Jesus oh my God. Christ, and Amazing. of course, I, I hearted it right away. Of course, you got it. Yeah. No, we're a nation of Ted Bundys that enjoy Thirsty Thursday. <laughs> yeah, we love happy hour. It's, we're yeah. zero killers who love if, happy if the, hour. If America ended happy hour, half the population would be killed. Yeah. Could you imagine, by the way, if they made pornography illegal in the United States of America? Oh, I mean, yeah. The, yeah. The, con- the world would be over. It'd be Israel-Palestine. We'd be bombing hospitals and shit. <laughs> There'd yeah. be like a guy named be Rufus suicide just bombers. bombing a hospital. <laughs> yeah. Dude, if you if you outlawed, if they outlawed alcohol again, I know f- 10 people who would be dead within a day. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know? Just from the shakes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I met a guy like I was just at like a birthday party where you know you have to go because your girlfriend and there's like 48 people you've never met in your life and one guy was talking to him and he's just like oh yeah you know and I was he's like just looking at me talking about golf and I go god your only job in life is to turn beer into piss that's the only reason you exist <laughs> on earth <laughs> like you ask him opinion like you'd be like you'd be like hey, cool ranch to redesign huh? he's like yeah the chips huh and just like downing his ninth beer <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. of the day. Yeah, no, yeah. down. He has to drink nine beers to even like get out words. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like one of those guys. It's. A, I always think like, like if I'm ever at a stoplight and I just see an apartment complex, I like I see all the windows and I'm like, okay, sixty percent of the people in there are masturbating to internet pornography right now, mm-hmm. and any like it literally at any given time, mm-hmm. any given time. The other twenty percent, it's literally a dice roll. <laughs> yeah. They're either looking up how to make something on the internet that is putting them on a watch list, or they're pooping into a bowl and eating it with a spoon. <laughs> and then the other twenty percent are just like playing Call of Duty, mm-hmm. and I think that's it. Playing Call of Duty, dropping, making they a whole 
bowl of mashed potatoes, dropping it on the floor, and then eating it off the floor. <laughs> yeah, that's they go, best case. And they go, fuck it, I'm not even alive anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm not alive. Yeah, I'm not alive anymore. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's literally people going like, it's, it's it drives me crazy because it's literally people being like, why do I not blow my family's head off at every waking moment? Mm-hmm. But they turn it into like, yeah, I, collect, I do these little figurines and mm-hmm. make, I make birdhouses and that keeps the that keeps the bullet out of my brain. Hey guys, Manscaped has leveled up and so should you. They've launched the fifth generation performance package, including the all new Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra. When you're going for a close shave below the belt, you want the best of the best. And this new trimmer features two interchangeable blade heads with three length setting combos and waterproofing so you can get any look anywhere. I've been using Manscaped for years. I actually used them before they sent any of uh, their products to us. I bought a Manscaped trimmer maybe four years ago and I've been using it ever since. I charge it once every, like, I swear to God, like once every six months. It's incredible. Same. I use it to trim my pubes, my balls. It keeps my balls nice and safe. And I use it for everything. Smooth. I use it for everything. It's great. They sent me the little nose trimmer. I put it in. It's fantastic. Getting nose hairs out of my ear. Uh, and they just sent us the new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. I tried that as well. It's like one of those old fashioned shaving kits i use it for my beard all the time yeah it's it's wonderful it's fantastic i love using it and listen i'm covered in hair when it comes to my balls my penis and my face so i would recommend it the performance package 5.0 also features the new weed whacker 2.0 ear and nose hair trimmer that i previously mentioned the crop preserver ball deodorant the crop soother toner and two free gifts so get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code lemon at manscaped.com that's 20% off and free shipping with the code lemon at manscaped.com. Thank you, Manscaped. And now back to the show. Very, very rarely do you see people that are doing something just for the enjoyment of it now. Mm-hmm. Like, you meet, so, like, used to people just like, you guys, am I crazy or did people just used to smoke weed and it wasn't like an identity? Or has it always been an identity? Am I way off here? It seems like people that smoke weed, I'm like, I'm sorry, are you employed by marijuana to smoke weed, sir? It's always like, are you? Of, is this your yeah. job, I'm, your career? I'm sponsored by Bongs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, bongs pays me 60 grand a year to be a fat piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, they pay me to look like absolute refried dog shit. It became more of a thing because it turned into like kind of like doing hard drugs after what? With the dabs, With dabs. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. heating up the rod. and Yeah, you, you're, you're smoking weed like a like a crackhead that was the first time i started hearing like i would have friends that said like oh i have to hit like two dabs before i can even Dude, get out of the apartment i knew I kn- shit. we knew a guy who said he had to take four dabs before he walked outside and yeah. i was in my head i'm like i should put a rod in your brain yeah right no now. i'm not like a drug addict but like i just need to like not even know like what's going on before i hang with my friends right i need to look at you and you know i don't even know my own identity yeah in this moment he goes no i don't drink i just like to show up to the bar with with my friends and 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 go through uh it in, it like I, I I like to have my brain going through the seventh layer of hell <laughs> while I'm around people. I like to have all the thoughts that I've yeah. had hidden in the very back of my brain, just on a constant loop, like a bear catching fish mm-hmm. in a fucking river. Yeah, right, right inside here, my man. It looks like Dante's Inferno. <laughs> yeah, no, I got all nine rings. I like to make the front of my brain feel like a guy in between two file cabinets. They're both on fire, and he's just grabbing files. And smoking cigarettes like a madman. Yeah. yeah, I like to smoke so much the book of Revelation starts happening in front of me. I see like a big demon with seven faces coming out of the ocean. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I like to open the, the refrigerator up at 3 a.m. and just see bats <laughs> flying at me. Hey, I did all this. Yeah. It's it's bad. I like to be hanging out at a bar talking to a friend and I turn and I see my grandma hanging from a noose in the corner. Yeah. And I'm like, is that real? I don't know anymore. You go, does it even matter? I go, does it even matter? I go, it's five o'clock somewhere. Hey, listen, I smoke so much weed that it follows demon has been <laughs> chasing me around Los Angeles for nine years. Nah, dude. It could be real. Uh, I'm a stoner. I just like to forget every single important thing anyone's ever told me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like to burn out the memory of my dad hugging me as a child. Yeah, just completely polish that over from my brain. Dude, people, people's story, like everyone takes everything to such an extreme level now that like I'll just 
you guys will ask me about my drinking. I'm not ever eager to talk about my drinking, but you guys will be like, man, the other day I thought about this. And I'll be like, yeah, I used to drink 14 beers every night and like sleep in my car with like one foot out the door. And people will be like, Ben's, Ben never was even like that hard of a drinker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you didn't even drink that. Hard. Well, and, and the people who say that are currently on their 15th beer of the night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They can't admit it. They go, Valium yeah. cuts out hangovers, faggot. <laughs> yeah. Retired. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry I didn't, like, I don't know what is, like, like, I, uh, I see people that smoke, like, huge, like, like, I'm gonna sound like a narc here, I'm gonna sound like a Boy Scout, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know how people are smoking the cone joints by themselves in one sitting. The big mm -hmm. fat, the big fat, how are you smoking mm -hmm. one of those by yourself? You don't know how that happens? I'll tell you how it happens. How, Dev? You just start smoking a lot of weed, <laughs> and then it's a couple, like it's literally like meaningless. So, like I, I used to smoke, I used to, full, up, I used to smoke multiple joints a night, dude. I used watching to, TV. I used to build up a tolerance too, but that's crazy. The big fat where it looks the, like a traffic cone. The ones from the dispensary, that's a bit much. That's great, and weed is. But here's the thing: weed is so much stronger now than it used to. There was be. a point where I smoked so much weed, Ben, that when I was sober and not high, I'd be like, "This is trippy as shit." <laughs> So super, I'd be like, whoa. Being like, sober would be the new high. Being sober was high. And mm. like, then I started enjoying that. And then I'd be like, yeah, I was like sober for like four hours today. I'm like, this, I'm like, this is yeah. fucking crazy, yeah, Mark's dude. Like, Mark's like, dude, bro. Yeah. That's insane. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm like listening to what this guy's saying to me. <laughs> yeah. This is trippy. That's my, yeah. Like, yeah. Dude, I'm today. Like, I'm doing like this. <laughs> dude, today I didn't smoke weed and I listened to Pink Floyd. It's crazy. You can like hear music. You can like hear the stuff. Coming out. No, I mean it's also funny. Every every person I met who's like a chronic weed smoker, and they're always like within five seconds of meeting them, they're always like, "Yeah, I just it helps me with you know my like anger problems." And then they, you, as you get to know them, they have the intensity of Jack Nicholson in The Shining. Yeah, in every waking moment <laughs> yeah. of their life. Yes, yeah. they're like you know it just like chills me out. And then you get you're in a car with them, they get cut off in traffic, and they're like. Pfft, I'm gonna Kill them. Yeah, I'm gonna torture them. I'm gonna fucking inside your fucking door. I'll cut your fucking face off and fuck it. Fuck you. They go, no, man. Like we just like like it. It's it's like steroids for my passive aggression. <laughs> I like to like let it like 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 yeah, linger. I like to let it fester, and then out of nowhere I snap. Yeah, it is. It's, it's really like HGH for being a condescending guy. Yeah, it's like H H G H for like passive. I mean, I've literally, I've literally known guys who have like hit like a fucking. I've seen them like hit a gravity bong like, and be like, yeah, I hope his daughter fucking kills herself, dude. I hope his wife gets his brains. Dude, cancer. when I worked on that yeah, weed I hope farm, baby's born with a club foot. Yeah, <laughs> I hope his baby's. I hope his. I hope his baby's born is just blood. It's just blood that comes out. <laughs> I hope it comes out like the like the fucking eraser head baby, but even more fucked up. <laughs> I hope it's even more fucked up than that, actually. Oh, I hope his wife dies on her birthday. But anyway, like, everybody should, like, smoke weed because, like, everyone would chill yeah, out dude, finally. Dude, if I didn't have this weed, watch out. I'd be angry sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, when I worked... Then he whips a plate at his wife's yeah, head. Yeah, whips a plate at his wife's head. Yeah, exactly. When I worked at this weed farm where, the, by the way, the office was called the Dab Lab. Right. When I worked at this weed farm, these guys were yeah. so high so constantly that when they weren't high, they they had they 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 were flipping the fuck <laughs> out, dude. They they would freak out over normal things. Like they'd be like, "Fuck!" <laughs> I heard the fucking post office. <laughs> Like normal events in life were like, oh, they had to get high to like go buy bread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like everything was so overwhelming. Normal life, they make normal life harder by smoking so much weed. Is that why it's fun? Like after a certain point? Because you're playing it like it's like yes, Halo yes. on legendary Weed's mode. Weed's great. Weed's great. It's fun because you get high and you go to the grocery store and all of a sudden you're in a fucking, it's like a journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, normally yeah. it's very mundane. If you, if you smoke a ton of weed and then you go to fucking Vons, you look around, you're like, oh, that guy's going to kill me. <laughs> You're like ducking and like the fucking like I saw get style it. and shit. Like it makes everything more like a video game. So like every day is Lord of the Rings if you're just insanely high. I used to say it's like smoking a video game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. It makes everything a little but more. Don't, but that's don't just if, psychosis in yeah. a way. But mm -hmm. don't if you smoke en enough, like you get to your point, like you, you're kind of smoking it just makes you retarded. You're just in a state of blotto. Yeah. You're just kind of just like. Yeah. 
Yeah, you usually wander around. Yeah, mm. it's after a while you're like, I'm not even thinking anymore. I'm not. I used to like smoke a weed because it would, you know, unlock parts of my brain. And I'm like, wow, I haven't really ever thought of that before. That's interesting. Yeah, if weed was not as strong, that's what I'm saying. Like, if they made weaker shit, I think it would have a better, like, more fun effect. Yeah, I I do. I like. I want to smoke a joint and feel a little high at the end of just a little high. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. Now now you smoke weed and it's it's insane. I guess everyone's calling me a pussy now in the comments. They're like, you know. Also, no. If they were selling it, no one would buy it because we're in America. You know. No one would buy what? No one would buy the like weed that doesn't get you that high. Yeah, it would just be guys like me. They're like, no, no, no. I smoke it to be retarded because you know I think about killing myself every waking moment. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Most people smoke weed. They, it's it's it, it's really great. Like if when you're at a certain age and like music is so much better in the car, mm-hmm. you like hotbox the car with your friends and you're like, you feel the vibrations of the music and it's great. But after a while, you keep you keep pulling from that part of your brain. You then your brain starts kind of losing it, mm-hmm. and then it turns into like you're sitting there in the car and you're you're like pretending to enjoy the song, but you're like, is that bus driver gonna like like kill us? Is he gonna pull us over? Like yeah, it, everything becomes. Insane. I liked the uh, the Carlin had a bit about it. It wasn't funny, but you know, yeah. he's well, so it's smart. A, it's a Carlin bit. So, yeah, yeah. I still love all of his stuff, but he had that bit where he said, uh, "Weed is a values changing drug." Where when your values are changing, you should use it. But then once your values stop kind of changing, then you should stop because it doesn't really do anything for you. Because mm. he says when you're starting to look at life from a, a different kind of perspective, it helps you shift and see angles of things. That's what he said. I don't know. Yeah. He might just be protracted. And then, by the way, then he did cocaine for like 60 years. and sure. Like after that. So, yeah. you know. That kind of makes sense. Yeah. I mean, weed's one of those things where if it's not too strong... No matter how m- much you've abused it, if you occasionally take one hit, it will kind of like center some people. Yeah. Some mm-hmm. people, you know, and it's also incredibly helpful with, with people that have like actual disabilities and Parkinson's and, you know, uh, I like I have a friend with uh, uh, whose kid has like extreme uh autism down syndrome i guess and <laughs> not down syndrome like but autism and like he cerebral palsy cere- yeah. is, is he epileptic and stuff he would have insane seizures yeah. and it was a nightmare for the family he was like joe rogan's best friend yeah, yeah the, guy, the guy mm-hmm. that like, know rogan about. used to talk about and we'd literally change or cbd cbd would, like completely changed their entire lives mm-hmm. like turned everything around the kid like hasn't had a seizure in like seven years so yeah, I think it's, it's helpful. A, I think it's, it's awesome, but it's abused by by guys that wear you know Thanos shirts mm-hmm. and shit. Thanos, yeah. Thanos, Thanos or whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should. Everybody should. I think be more like the incredulous Cholo, which is like the greatest archetype. Just a guy driving Uber, just t- talking about the saw, saw yeah. tin. Yeah, talking about really? jigsaw. Yeah, a guy where it's like you put a baby's brain in an adult. <laughs> You know, and he's he's walking around. It's I mean, it's it really is beautiful. It'll almost make you weep because he's walking yeah. around life without the routine and familiarity that like takes the specialness out of everything. He's just a baby walking around and being like, Ooh, they like pin those curtains into the wall, <laughs> like nails go through the curtain into the wall and then it stays. Yeah, every know? moment he's born again because he sees everything that he sees for the first time. Mm-hmm. Dude, he goes to the grocery store. He could be inside a grocery store for 48 hours. Just like walking inside by, like just walking, be like, it's like diet mayonnaise. <laughs> Damn. Like almost crying. Damn. Yeah. Shit. Shit. Yeah. Up. But that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. Think Ta- about it. Taking his glasses off, he's like, they make green ketchup. Fuck. But yeah. is he wrong? That's the thing. I mm-hmm. don't know if he's wrong. A guy so dumb that he like raises his hands in celebration watching like an <laughs> allergy commercial. He's like, they're so happy. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that company's going to help so many people. <laughs> oh, the pollen's gone. I mean, I have kind of had that taking <laughs> taking while butrin because I kind of felt like I've come out of a fog and I've caught myself like driving and I've just, just like I've caught myself driving and just being like, Man, it's just like having friends is really cool, man. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm all, like, I start crying because I'm so like, yeah. I'm like, I have friends and they care about me and I get to talk to them. But then I'm like, we've been driving down. Is I'm it like, supposed to make you have high highs and low lows? No, it's just supposed to like kind of make you, you know, not, you know, fucking jack off with a hot pocket and then throw it in a pile, <laughs> you know, by your bed. It's like a bad. grenade. Yeah, like a grenade. Yeah, I fucking, I, I fucking, I fuck a pocket pussy that I rip the top <laughs> off and I throw it. 
if yeah. you plug your such, ears. Yeah, such yeah. a depressed piece of shit, I buy a new pocket pussy because I'm like, I ain't cleaning shit. It would be great <laughs> if you were the billionaire gooner. Mm. For each jack off, you open a brand new pocket pussy that's never been used before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then you put all your old ones like down the garbage disposal. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm like Jack Nicholson is, is as good as it gets, but for gooning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just always opening a new pack and I'm like, got to keep them fresh. <laughs> and I goon without emotion, like clinical, like I'm just standing in front of the sink. Yeah, yeah, like you're brushing I, your teeth. I goon and I put it in a plastic bag and I drop it <laughs> in a chute. And my, uh, yep. my uh, very Hispanic maid. Mm-hmm. And then your gay neighbor uh, almost gets murdered mm-hmm. and you adopt his dog and you start fucking, <laughs> <laughs> start fucking the dog. I was like, yeah, and he's, he's hurt because the dog likes me more. And I go, no, 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 no. He, he likes me because of this trick. And then I'm like, like Jeffrey, come here, and then I, I start jacking him off. I'm like, that's why I'm jacking the dog off. <laughs> Honestly, a better yeah. movie. As, now. as goon as it gets. Mm-hmm. Oh, there we there go. There we go. If a fan could uh, Photoshop my face onto that poster and <laughs> as say, goon as, as goon as it, as it gets. gets, I love what I love about that movie. First of all, it's a great movie. I, I love that movie. I love as good as it always gets. defend that it's movie. movie. It's a great movie. Uh, what I love about that movie is I think Jace. I don't think you've said this on the show before, but you've said this to me uh-huh. that you watched that movie when you were a kid. And you're like, that's the if I could, that's the life. Yeah, that's like, the life. If I could live in New York, I'm like, if I could be completely alone, yeah, no one in my life, mm-hmm. but like just the first twenty minutes of the movie. I'd yeah. love to torture a waitress, <laughs> you know. Love to make jokes about her kid dying. <laughs> Again, we all fantasized about like being old, lonely men mm-hmm. when we were like nine. For some reason, yeah. When like, I was- we were watching about Schmidt. We were like, that, that guy's got the life. I was like, I just want to go down to the deli and have, I want to be a regular. I want them to know my order. Legitimately, if I was if I was a teacher of second grade and one of my students said their favorite movie was about Schmidt, I would call CPS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would call CPS on behalf of the parents. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. I'd be like, this kid sucks. <laughs> get, him, get him away from this yeah. couple. Yeah. <laughs> I'd call your CPS yeah. and be like, dude, this kid sucks. Yeah. He's going to like be a podcaster or something. Dude, shit. get him the fuck out. Yeah. This kid's 11. He watches about Schmidt. <laughs> and he's like, it's me. Yeah. He carries a briefcase full of drawings. He does. <laughs> he sucks cock. <laughs> he sucks ass. He's like the crazy old man Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Here. He bought a fedora. I saw, he doesn't wear it, but I saw it once, which is worse because he knows it sucks, but he still bought it. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we did that. I did do that. I bought a fedora at 11. I never yeah. wore it a day in my life. And oh. can I guess why you bought it? Why? I'm gonna I'm gonna guess why. Yeah, sure. It was because you thought the Blues Brothers was really cool. No, fuck you, dude. <laughs> dude no, fuck no, you. No, you I was not a Blues Brothers kid. I, I knew like two retarded kids. Like two there was a fat guy and a skinny guy uh-huh. in my high school, and they were both like the kid that like did their water just got shut off every now and then so they'd smell bad at school. Mm-hmm. Like and they'd wear usually wear like army pants, but sometimes they would show up looking like Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi in Blues Brothers. And like they went to Goodwill and bought the black suits and they'd walk uh. around with the Ray Bands. Like on it was like their Friday thing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. they would quote like the, you know, give me a a, a whole chicken and four diet cokes. Yeah. Like shit like that. Getting bullied by oh. teachers. <laughs> <laughs> like the history teacher's like, hey, faggot. And he just, <laughs> he's real yeah, the principal calls him into the office and just starts beating the shit out of him. We actually got spanked where we were from, so I don't know if that joke is going to land, actually. Yeah. At we actually school? got Yeah, we got spanked by the principal. The principal would have a huge paddle and, yeah. and fucking wail on our And ass. he would go, he would call you into his little police interrogation room, like sit you across from the desk, and you're like 10. And he'd be like, all right, I'll give you the choice. You can take four days' detention. People won't think very highly of you, or you can take the paddling, Jeez. and you'd be like, you'd be like, well, I'm not, I'm not gay, please, I'm not gay, please hit my ass with a piece of wood. Look at this excellent. Yeah, my child porn <laughs> detention is working. I got my shit rocked so many times, but then I, once I left Texas, I found out that's not a thing in other places, like. Mm-hmm. Because my dad beat my ass senseless no. with a huge board and yeah, belt. No, not really. It's more of a thing that, like, you know. It was like, but that's how Al Capone, you know, handled his kids. Yeah, that's more no, so it, like for that era. It was yeah. like nineteen tens, nineteen twenties. It was mm. funny moving out here. Like, like I've literally like been out here. This happened a month ago. I was talking to my girlfriend's dad. He's like sixty six, and I was I was like, yeah, you know, my childhood. You know, our, my dad had a paddle. He like, you know, like hit it like across our ass. You know, like I'm sure you had the same. He's like, no, I never had that. 
Because my had an awful dad, but he never did no. that once. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have a dad like that. Yeah, like it, we, uh, it, they don't set up the punishment. It just happens out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, you're you not know. getting punished like at the French Revolution. Yeah. You're getting walked to a room. The people yeah. that like paddle their kids is like if if you were deaf, like your dad would have been like, fucking answer me! <laughs> Snapping at you yeah. at the dinner table. Throwing crackers at you. Yeah. <laughs> like he's a fucking idiot. Like I hit him with the soda crack. Couldn't even hear it coming. <laughs> fucking moron. He can't even duck how's he ever gonna yeah. fight in a war yeah. damn it he learns sign language to abuse you verbally yeah, yeah. he only learns <laughs> faggot in sign language and blood he can do the blood yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay jace i i do i don't want to like miss it though because uh-huh. if the if you didn't have the fedora because of blues brothers which really sucks ass which is why i think you had no. the fedora i mean it, it still sucked ass but it was because i i wanted to be like a, de- a detective detect that makes more sense i had a I had that's like why you had the flask i had the flask and the fedora and i would just like i'd walk around and be like "Ooh, i'm a gumshoe i get you that know? Ooh, i get that i get that like having a little a little candy cigarette you throw i was very you, i was you, embarrassed like that too. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. embarrassing like that, but with I, I had images of like wanting to impress black people when I was a little kid. <laughs> yeah, and it's what I did when I was twenty two. This is serious, and mm-hmm. I've never admitted this before. <laughs> this is really crazy of me, but in my mind, ooh, this is juicy. Because I, I went to like Memphis with my parents and stuff, and like blues and all that shit, and I like I love you know I oh, love basketball no. and everything. Oh, and no. I was always like nervous around black people, but like I I you know I wanted them to like me and I always thought like as a kid like if if black people ever like buck with me I would just like like talk black but would in my version of it as like a nine year old or ten year old would just be like man motherfucker what the fuck you talking about like I literally I thought that's what I would do like if I was around you a bunch had, of black kids you had man. a plan yeah. just in case I was on happened. Beale Street one time and these black guys were like jumping over their whole family and shit mm-hmm. like it was one of those like all the kids and they were just like doing backflips over it and everyone was yeah, like yeah. clapping and shit and they brought me into it and I remember in my mind like if they ever like tested me I would just be like, man, shit, motherfucker, I don't know what you want to fucking like. I was like 11 years yeah. old, like, right. thinking about talking that way. Right. Oh, my like, God. Like, they were going to go like, oh, shit, he cool. And they'd be like, oh, shit, man, you wild as hell. <laughs> you like, wild as hell. Let me in. Yeah. Let's <clears throat> let him say it. <laughs> I, have, I have something that's pretty embarrassing when I was 21. What? Did I ever tell you guys when I, I that time I got, like, I was browning out on 6th Street. I got thrown out of three bars. I got thrown out of Whiskey Pig, Barbarella, and one other one. And then I got lost from my group of friends. Mm-hmm. And I saw a guy who was six foot six and like 400 pounds in black and wearing like a red leather jacket. And I was like, it's Patrice. <laughs> oh, God damn it. And I obviously Patrice's dad at this point because this is like 2012. Okay. But uh, I... I remember vaguely kind of just following this guy from afar and wanting to just hang out with him. Oh, God damn it. So. <laughs> you hunted him? I, well, what do you yeah, put you, it that you, way? You tracked him. Like you were a ninja. I tracked yeah, him. Yeah. Like you're, you're leaning down and like seeing like fucking Air Force marks. <laughs> oh, in, a, in a puddle. Yeah. Did, so I followed this guy to like three bars where he would post up you go to the bar like order a couple shots shoot him and like he was keep going he kept going so he was like bar crawling right with uh-huh. his like he had like two other black guys there he was with sure and he had I mean, he had the whole patrice like classic thing he right? was a big fat black guy that was <laughs> yeah. like cool yeah. yeah and i was stalking him jesus christ and uh this is way worse than what i just said <laughs> Because, <laughs> because to this man, this had, this had to be like one of the most horrifying nights of his life that he still talks about to this day. Yeah, yeah he thought he was going to get served. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by an old Japanese man. Yeah, <laughs> dude, can stumbling I t- down dude, the street. Okay, dude, can yeah, I tell you real on. quick? Yeah, yeah. We were picking. The story's not over yet. But yeah, 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 go no, on. No, go on. Just really quickly, we were picking you up at the golf course, like like two hours ago. Yeah. And I was waiting in the car with Katie and Katie goes, oh, here's Ben. And then it was just a, it was an old Japanese man walking by the car. Oh, come on. Dude, I swear to God. You guys both thought it was me for a second. Yeah. She thought it was you. And then I turned. I was like, that's a that's a fucking 60 year old Asian man <laughs> with a bucket hat and big glasses <laughs> and like a shitty mustache. Me and Katie started laughing on the green the other day because there was only one other dude on the chipping green. Mm-hmm. And, we, you know, it's 
you acknowledge that there's a person there, but you don't look directly at them. Sure. And me and Katie both assumed it was like a 75 year old uh, Asian man the whole time. Mm-hmm. And then we finally looked over. I swear to God, it was a nine year old Chinese kid. <laughs> He was nine. Mm-hmm. And then me and Katie started laughing so hard because I was like, I thought it was like a <laughs> seven-year-old Japanese guy like walking around tripping. She's like, me too. And I was like, yeah, but like, what's the difference right. really? You just think just old Asian people get this big as they age. <laughs> yeah, like, think, what's the difference? You literally think they turn into the mushrooms yeah, from Fantasia. They age like Benjamin Button. They're <laughs> they're born old. And they sl- yeah, they're such an efficient people. They disappear <laughs> when they die. Yeah. <laughs> So, so anyway, this man you were going to kill so that night. I'm I'm hunting, as Devin said. I'm I'm hunting a six foot six, mm-hmm. like very scary. I mean, if you've been around a, a black dude who's like six six and huge and is like looks that cool, it's very intimidating to be around. Yeah. So he's my, you know, not to make a whale reference, but he's my Moby Dick, and I'm Captain Ahab, and I'm on the high seas, mm-hmm. and I'm he's I'm hunting M-O- my whale. He's your M O B B Dick. M O B B like oh, Mob D. Oh, Goody Mob. Mob. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah Goody Mob. That took me a Goody bit. Moby Dick. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. Thank you, Devin. I should have given you good. that quicker. I apologize. <laughs> for those watching at home, <laughs> you Mob Dick. Yeah. <laughs> Point for Jace Very on the board. Very good. Very good. Uh, Mad Kid Fat City. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> anyway, so I follow him. Then the last bar he's at, I kind of, rather than just sort of like, tottering in the corner and just sort of like looking around <laughs> like I'm gonna like shoot up the bar I mm-hmm. actually approached the bar because I realized because when you're browning out you're coming and going and you, you're kind of piecing mm-hmm. the, it's like memento it's, it's browning you're out what you together. call following a black person around <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. sorry you're, so you're browning out so, you're picking no, up that's pieces. what it's called when you get the daily show <laughs> Oh, fuck. I'm trying to remember what he said to me, but I go up to the bar and they're ordering and I'm I just I'm doing my classic thing where I just have I have no grace or like so, mm-hmm. real social etiquette at all, <laughs> even though I probably think I'm look normal kind of. Yeah. I'm staring at him. I'm probably by the way, I'm probably a foot from him. I think I'm at the end of the bar kind of looking down vaguely. I'm probably staring into the side of his temple for all I know. <laughs> And he looks at me and he goes, you've been following us? Wow. And I go, I go, uh, yeah, I mean, I was at like. He said, yeah. I go, I, I <laughs> he said, yeah, I've been following you. Because I went, like, they're jumping from bar to bar, like, every 10 minutes taking shots and then going yeah, to a trying, different place. They're trying to get away from you. And then they keep, they obviously keep seeing a guy, because at the time, you remember the three year span where I only wore red pants? Yeah. So like and I had uh like a mustache and Warby Parker glasses mm-hmm. and I was just drunk all the time. Yeah. So like I'm hard to miss. I'm also very tall. You're very tall and you, and you are walking like a ninety five year old Chinese man. You're not trying gonna to miss dance. Me. Yeah. You're not gonna miss me. Mm-hmm. So he asked me if I'm fall after I'm, I'm, I'm by the way, I'm literally staring. Mm-hmm. And he looks at me like kind of like sidelong and asked me that. I was like, Yeah, I'm like <laughs> I was like at the last like places you guys were at, but like honestly, I will be I'll be honest, dude. I started. I swear to God, this is what I said. This isn't a Burt Kreischer. I swear to God, this is literally like what I said. Mm-hmm. I said I go. I'm I've been following you guys because like I just think you're like really cool, man. And, like, <laughs> I was thinking that maybe I could like maybe naturally like hit it off with you guys and we could like have a whole night together and we could like go from bar to bar and all this shit. And he like he looked down at his buddies. I remember he looked down at his buddies and they were like looking up at him because he's like the alpha. And he looked over at me and he grabbed me like this, like on the neck, and he goes, You rolling with us tonight, white boy. <laughs> really? Yes. He was cool about it. Yeah, that's but awesome. This is where the story takes a turn. So Ooh, then okay. <laughs> you lost <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yeah, yeah. You, you lost your uh, you lost you lost your wallet. No, uh, so then we go to like all these places and he's actually buying everything. He's buying me tons of shots and all this shit. I eventually basically black out. I remember eventually one of my friends finding me and pulling out of this place. We, me and him were like dancing together on dance floors and stuff. I was cooking like little B. They loved they loved all of it, right? Wow. Uh, I get home the next day and I have his, uh, he's, he has my uh, thing on Facebook Messenger and he's messaging me. 
and uh, he was like, yeah, let's stay in touch and all this shit. Uh, t- I put the pieces together later. He's like, a, he was the biggest loser like on planet Earth. <laughs> he had like no job. He had nothing going for him. He was like always mm-hmm. trying to network with people. He was like putting everything on credit. Right. My relationship with him, because I used to message him back and forth. My relationship turned into him. He's like, he would call me like on Facebook Messenger and shit or video chat or whatever. And I would never pick up. And then he would message me and be like, yo, buy me Domino's right now. I'm, I'm right here. And he would do this like once a week where he's like, man, I don't have any money. Like, I need Domino's. Yeah, he like, started get me doing those like, like, I'm going to fucking now use this this, this yeah. little weasel. <laughs> this white weasel yeah. that followed me. Yeah. This insane person. That <laughs> yeah. And I like, I kind of like looked at, I. I sort of like looked at his life on Facebook. I'm like, oh, this guy's like a huge loser who has like one outfit and he goes yeah. out to the yeah. bars and like, That's he, like a, he, he's trying to impress people like me. It's honestly. like a stalker realizing the woman he's trying to like rape and capture is like a loser. <laughs> And he's like, oh, I don't, oh, I don't want to, like, I'm not trying to stalk you anymore. No, yeah. and I just want to be like, like, I was obviously, I was probably with him. I'm like, yeah, sit on this stool and like kind of lean and go, <laughs> ah. I mean, it's, like, it's, I mean, yeah, I'm like, say, be like incredibly intelligent and like a voice of your generation. Like I, a, I also like to imagine, <laughs> I'm like, come on, don't like ask me to buy you Papa John's. Yeah. Like, like be the coolest yeah, guy I've on. ever seen. You're like him because you're all the same. Yeah, be, be a him. legend. Um, <laughs> I just like to imagine you just thinking this guy's shaft in your head the whole time, and mm-hmm. then like like if you pop out of your head, he's just like the like the guy from Norbit walking around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the biggest. Oh, I was so drunk. You're yeah. so drunk. It's like thinking a fat chick's hot. Right. You thought he was the coolest black guy alive. Yeah. Yeah. It turns out he's yeah. He's Eddie Murphy and and uh, fucking Bullfinger. He has a yeah. fake leather jacket. He like he ordered from China for like eight dollars on eBay. Yeah. And like. He probably looked like shit, honestly, but mm-hmm. I was so drunk. I mean, it's just at that point, it's just shapes and blurs. And mm-hmm. I'm like, it's Patrice. I just followed yeah. him. Yeah, mm-hmm. you were sometimes you were sometimes so drunk, you would turn into like the end of the Blair Witch Project, just like facing the corner in the middle of the, <laughs> in the club. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this guy faced the corner and he, he pissed himself. Yeah. He stood there for nine hours. Just walking in a dumpster, <laughs> like an NPC in a video game. I can't believe I would get thrown out of places, legitimately thrown out. Yeah. Like people going like, don't ever come here again. Yeah. Yeah. Knocked over the DJ booth. I think that <laughs> night or either maybe the week after. Kind of had some fun times in Austin where the guy like has a fold out table laid out at the bar. Mm-hmm. And like me and my friend were dancing and I like fell back over and I knocked over his stand with the speaker and like fucked up everything. And it was like, Vroom! and the thing ripped out. And like the bouncer was like, I got it. Out. I mean, <laughs> Incredible. I know. He goes, obviously I have to like, you know, ask you to leave now. And yeah. I was like, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I saw some black guys out front. I'm going to get my scope on them. <laughs> yeah. I just dropped this geotag in this black guy's pocket. Just dropped an air tag in a black guy's Air Force. Dude, I'm going to follow him all night. <laughs> just we're pulling out a big screen with an antenna you pull out. Uh-huh. Like it's fucking... You're sitting in a white van yeah. in the hood just listening to conversations <laughs> going on. You're, you're driving around with the beeping device from No Country for Old Men. <laughs> just seeing seeing the beep get like, yeah. closer yeah, together. I, I pull up to a Kentucky Fried Chicken and it starts <laughs> beeping even louder. Yeah, you pull back. You, see, if you drive by, it's beep, 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 beep. As you're getting away, it's beep, beep, beep. Put it in reverse. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. <laughs> very, very good. Yeah, very bad, actually. Very I bad. I do kind of miss being a terrorist, though. It really yeah. ruled. I remember, like, I remember one of those nights, uh, it might have been that night, I was like cooking like crazy on the dance floor and I, I'm i like not aware of where I'm at in like space and time at all. And I go like this, like I'm flipping like a, a fake hamburger and I just hit a girl's drink as hard as I can. <laughs> it goes all over her and she's just like, just dripping wet and petrified and I just go, I just, I just scramble like a like a spider. Yeah. Like out of the you club. You run like a cartoon, just, like you pop up in the air and go, and then take, <laughs> take off. Owning none of it, not apologizing. <laughs> just yeah, just running away. It completely ruined her night. Mm-hmm. It's a good ten dollar drink. Yeah, good time. fun wow. time. That's awesome. If I could go back and do and relapse and go to Barbarella and just have one more night with the worst people on earth and then die in a mass shooting after I'm following around that big giant black guy, 
that would kick. If me, if I could have one night with that giant black guy, that six foot six Patrice lookalike guy, mm-hmm. and if I could go to the comedy mothership and just like watch Kill Tony, drunk out of my mind. Mm-hmm. Oh, make no mistake. One if night if on you Street. if you were if you were twenty one now, you'd be in Austin getting raped by Ron White one night. <laughs> 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 yeah, in the in the river that runs through the town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you'd be dating Tony Hinchcliffe mm-hmm. secretly. Yeah. Not even knowing it. Yeah, that black guy was just David Lucas. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, I think it's time to say goodbye. Yeah, but we got to go over to the Patreon. Yeah, where we're somehow uh, more racist than this, actually. <laughs> we're not even. Uh, no, I'm racist. kidding. I'm kidding. It's jokes. It's, it's all jokes. Yeah. It's all jokes. It's obviously, all jokes. it's all jokes. Obviously, everybody's JKing. Everybody's joshing. It's nonstop JK. Hashtag pray for Israel. You know they need a lot of prayers. They're bombing a lot of hospitals, and it's very hard. These mm-hmm. Palestinian kids are little fucks, <laughs> and they'll be dealt with accordingly. Oh, they'll be. I, I'd like to spank them myself. Did mm-hmm. you know the problem was children? Yeah. <laughs> Did you know the problem was children's hospitals? Did you know the problem was little brown children? <laughs> mm-hmm. Fuck them. They need a good little. They need a good little spanking. Mm-hmm. Those little. Those little demons. Spank them. Spank them with a nuke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Patreon.com. <laughs> <laughs> for more episodes and golf content and uh, all that stuff. And Devin is uh, at Hate Watch Pod. Yeah, yeah. Jace is at Sad Drawings by Jace. Live streams on the Lemon Party Eclipse channel. Make sure you subscribe to that every Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Pacific Standard Time. And then they go up behind a paywall after 24 hours on the Patreon. So God bless everyone. God bless. God bless, God bless everyone. Goodbye. God bless. Good night. Good night, Good night everyone. Very good. Good stuff, fellas. Hey, do we need to cut that story out that I told at the end, or is it okay? I thought it was, oh, I think it's fine. It's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know whether to tell it if you guys were like, no, it's too fucked up. No, I don't no, think it's so at all. You're beat.